Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and you're looking at the first video in the first section in our series on bookkeeping basics, which, by the way, will be made into a full length class that you can download in my learning center. So, this is just kind of a preview and an overview. And in the first section on bookkeeping basics, we're talking about the different account types. Before you can get into anything else, you really need to understand that there's really just five different account types, generally speaking. We have our assets, we have our liabilities, our equity, and those are your balance sheet accounts. And we have our income and we have our expenses, and those are your profit and loss accounts. This over here, the net income, is just a function of the income minus the expenses, of course. Not really an account type. Now, if you look in a, any accounting system, these are the five categories of accounts. There's no ifs, ands, buts, no exceptions. This is it. But what most accounting systems do is they subdivide these sections into special types of accounts. So, for example, if I look in a QuickBooks chart of accounts, like the one I've got here, you'll notice we have the type. Now, the, one of the first type is a bank. A bank is a special type of asset account, and as far as QuickBooks is concerned, it's a special type of asset account that lets you write checks and record deposits. That's the whole key to a bank account. That's why a lot of times when clients ask me how they, they should uh, you know, record their expenses that they pay out of their pocket, I tell them to create a bank account and call it Petty Cash because then you can just write checks and it's easy for them to understand, okay, I paid for something, I'm going to record a check in QuickBooks. And since I paid cash, I'm going to use the Petty Cash account, which is set up as, as the type uh, bank account. Account. Uh, we have other current assets, fixed assets. These are all still assets. They're just special types, but they all still fall under this general heading of assets. Then we have our liabilities, which I've given you examples of the different types here. So we have accounts payable, credit cards, loans from banks. These are loans made by others to us. That's why it's a liability because we've got to pay it back. Lines of credit, sales tax payable, prepaid revenues. Also a liability. If somebody pays me for for services before I've actually performed the service, then I have to do one of two things. Either I have to perform the service or I've got to pay the money back. Either way, it's a liability until I've done one or the other. Finally, in the balance sheet, we have equity accounts. And generally speaking, these are specific to the type of entity formed. So for example, if I've got a corporation, I'm going to have shareholder contributions. And the second one should actually say shareholder distributions. So let's fix that. Not distributinos. Distributions. Member capital would be for LLCs. Partner capital for, of course, my sense of humor comes in here. You guessed it, a partnership. And then retained earnings, of course, applies to all the types. There are other equity accounts that you'll find in there. A lot of times I'll take instead of a, I'll take that petty cash, for example, that I mentioned on the bank accounts. And at the end of the year, at the end of a, a period, especially if there's any kind of interim reporting period that we want to look at, I will take whatever balance is in the petty cash account and reclass it over to the appropriate contribution or distribution account in the equity section to close that out and zero out the bank account because it's not a true bank account so that's how I handle something like that then coming over looking at the profit and loss accounts I've got my income and expenses and of course in, under income it's pretty straightforward we've got product sales or consulting income as very general examples and of course when we look at a specific company we're gonna see variations on these and things that would fall under these headings for example in the example we use here in this uh, this section this series rather I've got lemonade sales that's my product sales we're gonna do a lemonade stand so instead of product sales I call it lemonade sales in other words we get a little more specific when we know exactly what type of business we're dealing with but until then as long as we're talking theory which is what we're talking here then we just call it product sales or consulting income and that covers just about every type of income account pretty much that you're ever going to encounter on any set of books cost of goods sold most people would think of as an expense because it works like an expense but the reality is it is an income account it's what we call a contra income account and one of the proofs of this is that if I go into QuickBooks and if I ever run a report and I want to look at, uh, let's just go to a custom transaction detail report. When I look at filtering, for example, on the account type, on the account, if I want to use one of these general kind of groupings of accounts, and let's say I just say income accounts, doo -doo -doo, all income accounts, here it is, income and other income accounts. You won't see it show up here because I don't have any transactions booked on these books yet but I'll demonstrate it for you later in case you're not willing to take my word for it. 
the cost of goods sold will show up here on a report that's filtered for just income and other income accounts. The reason being, cost of goods sold works like an expense, but it's really a special type of income account. We'll get more into talking about cost of goods sold and how that functions and what its sort of purpose in life is in a future section. I want to keep it simple for this part. So let's go back to our diagram here and take a look at the rest of the account types. And the last section left is the expenses. And most of us know what those are. Those are pretty easy to understand. Your overhead, your rent, your utilities, your selling expenses, your your um, office, your professional services, consulting, and so on and so forth. You know, you can add to the list, add infinitum. Anything pretty much that doesn't fall into you know, and in the other sections, of course, at this point, we're left with uh, expenses. But generally speaking, they're the things we pay for, the things we pay for in order to get the business going that aren't directly tied into the production of income. The expenses that are tied into the production of income are things like the um, the cost of goods sold. Things, And, and the, the, the key distinction is the, that the... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. A cost of goods sold item is is an item that is, well, first of all, by strict definition, cost of goods sold is literally just that. It's when we're selling products. The IRS doesn't really want to see cost of goods sold, for example, on a profit and loss, unless, in fact, we're carrying inventory and selling products. But on the consulting side, a lot of us think of that as the cost directly related to the production of income. So, for example, in my case, I consult with companies and I send bookkeepers out, among other things. So I classify what I pay the bookkeepers as cost of goods sold because I want to see what that looks like before deducting any other expenses. So I look at my gross profit in terms of here's the total that I've charged clients, here's what I've had to pay out for the people I've sent out to the clients, and the immediate difference, the gross profit, is is what I've netted on that. So that's the, And then the expenses would be all the rest of the stuff that we pay for. That was all just to make that one very simple point. So these are your five account types. And in the next section, what we're going to start to look at is what increases these accounts in terms of debits and credits. How do I increase the balance in one of these accounts? And obviously, what follows from that is what would decrease it. And what I'm talking about is the normal balance of an account. So for every one of these five account types, each one of them has a normal balance. Something increases an asset. Something increases a liability. And it's not always the same. And it's not always what the bank has trained us to think. In fact, in the case of our bank accounts, it's the exact opposite. Bank accounts are assets. Assets are increased in the accounting world by debits. The banks have trained us to think that credits increase our bank account because when we're dealing with it on that level, that's true. The bank gives us a credit. It means they've increased the balance in our account. But in the accounting world, it doesn't work like that. They're two unrelated things. It's almost as though the bank has given it to us from their own perspective. In the accounting world, if I increase a cash account or a bank account or any asset for that matter, it's getting a debit. And the reason I think even in this day and age, or maybe even especially in this day and age, when people are using computer programs like QuickBooks to do the bookkeeping, it's so important to understand that because when you get beyond the very basic transactions, if you understand your debits and credits and specifically how that translates in terms of how the transactions you post are going to impact your financial statements, then that will make you a much more powerful bookkeeper or accountant because when you get into complex transactions, you want to start thinking it through in terms of what should this look like on the balance sheet and or what should this look like on the profit and loss statement. And of course, many transactions affect both. So if I understand that, then I can start thinking in terms of, okay, now that I understand what it should look like, how does that translate in terms of debits and credits? And when I understand that, then I can get into a transaction in QuickBooks, a form that QuickBooks gives me, such as a check, and I can think in terms of how I need to record that check in order to accomplish what I want to. And a very good example of where this becomes important to understand is when you're booking payroll. Because on a payroll check, when you're booking it in QuickBooks, the tendency, and a lot of bookkeepers do this, almost every account I pick up from a former bookkeeper I've seen this on, <coughs> excuse me, the bookkeepers were simply booked in that paycheck as payroll expense. And of course that's dead wrong, and most of us know that. But probably if you're watching this, it's because you have some bookkeeping experience, and hopefully you know that. Reality is, 
when you understand your debits and credits, then you understand that when I'm booking payroll, I need to I need to debit an expense for the entire amount of the payroll. I also need to show the liabilities that were taken out of that paycheck. So my check has to net out to the net pay. But I'm not simply going to show the net pay and call that all payroll expense. So again, in a more advanced section, and I'll get into that more specifically, I've also got a post on my blog, on Nerd's blog, that deals with this area very specifically. I'm looking at the back end of it right now. But when you get into the to my blog, you can search for payroll and it will no doubt come up. And you will find a, a very nice blog post here. And a video, of course, that goes over specifically how to book payroll. And I talk about the mistakes most bookkeepers make. So check that out if you want to see something on that right away. But getting back to my point here, that's just one example of why it's so critically important to me that when you're booking transactions on a set of books, especially if you're doing it by trade, then it's really important for you to understand your debits and credits so that you can understand what the financial statement should look like and how to get there from the transactions that you're posting. Because the bookkeepers, I think a lot of us don't think about it in those terms. We just think, okay, I've just got to record these transactions so I can get a bank statement to reconcile. And that's not real bookkeeping. That's that's data entry. Real bookkeeping says, you know what, I have to understand um, how the, the nuts and bolts part of it that I'm working on when I'm recording these transactions affects the bigger picture. The bigger picture, of course, again, being what's the balance sheet going to look like and what's the profit and loss going to look like when I'm done. So that's the whole purpose of this whole series that I'm doing is to start hopefully helping people better understand these very concepts. And uh, that is it for now. Any questions, email me, seth at nerdenterprises.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the web.